Well, I took those pieces of angle iron off the stove and took them down to the hanger. I cleaned them up with a wire brush. The screws heads protruded just a little bit and so I countersunk them a little bit deeper. I took a piece of scrap angle or a piece of leftover angle that I had from something else and it's uh, the stuff that the angle iron that I put up on the door for the post there is two and a half inch uh, flat angle and I had a scrap piece down there of three inch angle. I cut off two pieces uh, two and a half inches wide to fit on that uh, angles and I've got those set up on there all squared up and everything. I'll, I'll uh, weld those on there. I had this piece of uh, 3 32nd and it's uh, three inches wide. Uh, I went ahead and drilled and countersunk holes in it. I would have liked to have had eighth inch but this is what I had 3 32nd. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt it onto the door frame itself and then I cut some more of this uh, three inch uh, angle. I cut it off and I cut it, it with a leg on it so that leg can then hang over these uh, angles here and we'll make a hinge out of those. That's the plan, Stan. We got these tabs welded on this uh, right hand angle iron. There's a little bracket right here. This is what the hinge will rest on, or that is part of the hinge. That'll be the, the fixed side of the hinge. I've got uh, the pad, one right there down low, and another one up here closer to the top. I took those and figured out where to put them, tacked them on there, and then took them off, uh, welded them up, and then painted them. Now the door here, I've got it set. Here's the tabs that'll wind up being the hinges on here. I've just got them set on there for now. I've got to figure out some way to hang that door on there to hold that up in position and then figure out where to put those and then uh, I'll, I'll tack them on. But I got this screwed on there pretty good. I just took this um, strap and put it on the drill press and just kind of randomly drilled holes in it. Uh, kind of staggered them a little bit and just I didn't measure them out or anything. I just kind of eyeballed them in there and drilled them out. I've got one hole down here that I drilled in it that went through one of the knockouts, cutouts in the in the uh, stud, so it's not going to have anything in it. Um, I might I'll probably fill that when I get this off to, to weld those tabs on there. Some of these screws may come out of there because depending on where the position of these uh, hinges go they're gonna might cover up one or more of those so I'll uh, probably take those screws out of there and leave them out but I didn't know where the hinge tabs were gonna be I got a piece of this cement board and I clamped up here onto the, the door frame so that I could get the right amount of overhang on this uh, piece of steel and I transferred all those holes into this stud and I just used a, a 13 64th I believe it is drill bit which is the clearance hole size for the numbers 10 screws I just want used one of those to uh, run through each one of these holes just enough to mark the stud underneath it and then I took a number 27 drill bit which is the size of the drill bit for a number 6 screw and drilled out these holes with that I took my little jig here there's a nut plate jig. It's got this pilot stud here in the middle. It goes down in the hole and then there's a drill guide right here and you drill out a number 40 hole and then you flip this over and this pin here goes in the number 40 hole. This one goes back in the uh, number uh, 27 hole and you drill again through the drill guide in, into the material with a number 40 drill bit. That little jig is to put these nut plates on with. Now that one happens to be for a number six nut plate but the whole distances are the same for a number six as they are here for these number tens. So that located the holes for these nut plates and then I went back through it with a, a 13 64th drill bit and drilled out the clearance holes for the screws. Now I fastened these nut plates on 
with a 332 flathead pop rivet. And I had a hell of a time with these pop rivets getting them to set. They wanted to pop. The shank would pop off before they got set tight. So I had to drill out several of them to get them set tight. Once these nut plates are riveted into the back side of this stud, then there's a, a nut here for a 1032 screw that's captured on the back side of this and it floats a little bit. So that goes underneath and it holds real well. So the screws then go right down into it. It's got a lot better holding power than those nut zerts do. I was worried about this door having enough rigidity in it because it's got a lot of going to have a lot of weight on it when it swings open. So that should hold this strap onto that stud nice and firm. And here's a look at the underside with the nut plates on it. I was wondering how I was going to hold that door up there to uh, mark the location of those hinges. There's no place to clamp that thing on or anything. I thought about putting straps around it to hold it up, but uh, they are kind of complicated. It, it could have made that work, but I get to looking and it just happens that this workmate table that we have with the uh, legs folded up on it is just the right height to uh, support that door to hold it up. I had to put a couple of little quarter inch plywood shims underneath it to get it to the right height, but it works perfect and it, and it makes a nice uh, surface there to hold that thing up with. Holds it up real well. So I've got the hinges clamped on there. I've got them uh, clamped onto the hinges on the post on the uh, body of the of the oven and onto the strap for the upright. So I can get the welder out and tack those on and then take that piece off and, and weld those straps on. I'll put it back up and drill the holes for the hinge pins. I have to do a little bit of radius and on the hinge itself so that it clears, it pivots uh, without any interference of the tabs on the hinge there against the post. Anyway, that part is pretty well figured out. That worked out pretty good. I just uh, serendipitous that that table happened to be the right height. We got the hinges mounted up. Those are seven sixteenths inch bolts for the, the hinge pins on there. I just happen to have some fine thread seven sixteenths inch bolt. They look like they're about an inch and a half long, maybe two inches. There she is. It works. Works beautiful. Once I got the hinges, uh, the points put in, the bolts put in there, the pivot points, because these were square and they, it wouldn't have turned the way it was. It would have hung up in these uh, against this angle bracket here against this wall. So I went ahead and took a center punch, punched the uh, bolts here. So the uh, point of the compass here had a good point to ride in. Otherwise, uh, I tried it without it, and it just skips around on top of that bolt head, and you can't get an accurate arc there. But I went ahead and drew the arc, then took this off, took it down to the shop, took the plasma torch, and kind of hogged it off. It's a butchered up job. Um, then I put it on the belt sander and tore my belt sander up. Well, tore the belt up. Anyway, I cleaned it up um, and got it to working. Put it on here and it hinges just perfect. I like that. That's going to be plenty strong enough. Once I get that board on the inside, that's going to stiffen this whole thing up. It's going to weigh more, but it's going to stiffen it up. I was thinking about uh, welding those bolts in on this uh, top side and uh, just using them for pins, but I think I'll just go ahead and leave them as bolts. That way I don't have to lift it up. I can just slide it off if I ever want to take the door off. I got the rock, uh, hardy plank, whatever that stuff is, cement board, uh, all screwed onto the uh, door panel. Have it hung up. I can leave it hung up now. And it swings nice. It opens up at least 180 degrees. So it will be easy access in and out of there. No interference from the door getting in and out. There was uh, some of these knockouts in the studs for utility knockouts, and these are outside uh, doors or outside uh, exposed. I don't I don't know if I'm going to have any uh, 
flashing or anything over the top of this outside, any trim on the outside of it or not, not for a while. So I tuck, cut some of the flashing that I used to make the brackets for the window and I just spot welded those in over those openings. It was uh, one on each side, uh, one in the center, uh, the top and the bottom, and then three corners. So that should stop any air infiltration into the insulation or any leakage of heat out of that. So now I can get the fiberglass insulation and insulate that door. Oh, I'm not sure what I'm going to cover it with yet on the outside. I've got a piece of aluminum I could use. Probably get some sheetrock and cover it up. And I need to figure out uh, some kind of a latch for it. I haven't got that figured out yet either. Now here's what the strap looks like now that it's all painted and put on there. And uh, it's held on pretty good. It's, it's holding up pretty good. I'm real happy with the way that is. I'm trying to figure out a, a gasket for the door and there's just not a whole lot of options around here. I was looking for either ceramic or fiberglass tape of some kind. Hardware store didn't have any and the boat shop and the marine shop didn't have anything. I thought they might have something because they deal with a lot of mufflers and stuff like that on boats. But uh, I went to Napa and I found this roll of high temperature fiberglass tape used for a muffler wrap, a manifold wrap. And that was 60 bucks. That was less than buying four or five pieces of wood stove door gasket. It's a thinner material, about an eighth of an inch thick. So I think it's going to work. I can either double it over if I need to or something, but I think that'll work for a door gasket on there. At least uh, that's what we're going to have. I put the gasket material uh, around the door. I decided to go ahead and put it on the on the main body of the oven. I, I was thinking about putting it on the door, but I just decided to go ahead and put it on the body of the oven. I put one strip up here at the top and one at the bottom, and then I doubled them up here on the sides because they don't quite come out to meet the, the top there. Anyway, that sealed it up pretty good. I uh, drilled the holes with an uh, eighth inch drill bit uh, through the metal and uh, used pop rivets now for the top and the bottom I used some some large head dome head pop rivets uh, they're, they're made for fabric and stuff figuring those would hold in better and wouldn't pull through but I kind of run out of those and and I'd use some regular round head pop rivets and they look like they're going to hold up uh, just fine if I have any problem with them I'll get some more dome head ones and put in there now typical fiberglass is two things with it it's just like any roving you use if you're fiberglass and building a boat or uh, anything else make it out of fiberglass and when you cut it it has a tendency to unravel and uh, this stuff is wants to come unroven pretty bad so I took the ends and I, I uh, put some uh, high temp RTV underneath them uh, the first one up here on the top I did I, I put it on the outside and tried to smear it in with my fingers and that looked like crap so I went ahead with the rest of them and I just once I got them pop riveted in I just folded them over run a bead of RTV along the underside on the body of the oven then I squeezed it or pushed it down and kind of kneaded it with my fingers to push it into the weave now it'll hold the ends from uh, coming out a little bit but mainly I wanted to work it into the into the fabric itself to stop it from unraveling the other thing about it is it's uh, typical fiberglass in that it's glass fibers and when you work with it, cut it, drill it, even just handling it, you get loose glass fibers and they're sharp and they get into your fingers and stuff. So, But I think it's going to work pretty good for a gasket. It's uh, sealing up pretty good around that door and uh, it's, it's fairly easy to work with. It's about a two and a half or three inch wide strip so it covers a good area. And the nice thing about it on this is it covered up that ugly ends on the um, sheet metal studs there. Um, they were kind of crappy looking. And I did buy some flashing I was going to use to uh, finish those out with to flash them out to kind of cover that up and fare everything in. Still might use it, I don't know. But the main thing right now is getting this thing going. So I need to figure out some way to latch the door closed, uh, to pull it closed tight. I had a couple of little latches that I bought uh, a week or so ago with the idea of putting on there and I can see they're not going to go work. Uh, so now I'm going to run to town and see if I can find something in town 
and if not then I'll have to come back and try to make something. Uh, it'd be a lot nicer to be able to find something ready made so I could get to working on something else. My wife asked me what I was going to use to hold the door closed with. I jokingly told her rubber bands. I guess I wasn't that far off from the truth. I went to uh, the hardware store and spent 20 minutes looking around in there trying to figure out some way to cobble something up that would work for a latch on this. And this is what I finally came up with is uh, just a spring. I put an eye bolt in here in the door. That's a 3 16 eye bolt. Got big washers on both sides. I got this spring, put a, an S hook on the end of it, and then this is just a, a hasp uh, the, for a lock, a small lock, and it had a, for a hasp. That's the eye for that, uh, the loop for that. And I just put that in there with one screw into the sheet metal. So that's it. That'll work for now. If something better comes along. Anyway, I've got the problem of cl how to close the door solved there. Well, now I'm going to wire up the controller and stuff and see what I can do about getting that heated up inside there. Still, I put some insulation on the door, but I'm not going to put a cover on the door until I figure something else out more permanent for, uh, for a door latch.